Okay, so a while back I posted uh, this post, I guess it was back um, nearly a year ago, uh, November 2018. Um, this is a concept that is you know, fairly well known, and I'm certainly not the first person to, to talk about it, but it was uh, talking about something I'd uh, heard people or read uh, threads about people having some uh, questions about. And it was basically the idea of after someone had seated a crown, they noticed that uh, over time they opened up a space. And it's in my experience, it's usually, you know, in a class one patient, it's typically the upper second molars or, you know, if they're missing a tooth, the upper first molar. But anyway, it's usually the terminal tooth, and I find it much more common on the upper than the lower, a softer bone and whatnot. And what usually is happening is, you know, although the, the patient feels like everything feels good, um, as the patients, have, you know, they bite down, they check their bite, it's easy for them to posture forward, um, but they end up putting a little extra force on these um, mesial inclines of these cusps on the upper tooth. And so as that's happening, it ends up driving the tooth back. And it's not even usually that visible, but you'll find that the floss doesn't snap and they start packing food, they have gum irritation and whatnot. So the idea is how do we correct this? Now in a perfect world, you could just adjust the occlusion so that doesn't happen, the tooth would drift back forward. That you know, is, is ideal. Uh, and maybe it'll happen over time, but a lot of it, it, it's usually going to take a while. So sometimes we want to cinch that tooth forward and there's lots and lots of ways to do that. You could put some buttons or brackets and to put an elastic, pull the tooth forward, certainly easy ways to do it. But, um, if you want to do it with, a uh, uh, with an aligner tray, a clear tray or whatnot, um, this is, you know, kind of how I would approach it. Uh, since we're really only worried about one tooth or maybe on both sides, sometimes that can happen. Um, you know, this is what we, what I would do and I have done and then it's not often, but once in a while I have to do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show a sample model. And I'm going to do so in mesh mixer. Okay, so this is a patient that has not been through ortho, but did have a crown, and um, it's you know distalized this tooth a little bit from that you know, trauma, if you will. So I'm going to show you how to correct the tooth, but be aware that you still need to fix it after the fact. So ideally, you're going to pull the tooth forward, then you're going to check the occlusion in that mesial, you know, that that corrected position, and dial it in, adjust the occlusion so that it is um, is uh, consistent and it does not relapse. That said, um, I'm just showing you how to use the aligners to fix it. So first thing I am going to do, I'm going to go ahead and clean up this model just so we don't have a bunch of excess, because um, I want to have it to be I want it to be printable, and I don't need all this extra junk, if you will. Um, lots of ways to trim it. I have tons of videos on this, so. Okay, so I finished trimming this model. Um, I think uh, if you've watched enough of my videos, you know that I actually now base models typically in Blue Sky Plan because it's uh, it's pretty easy to go ahead and trim it. It's not as easy as here, but the actual basing is faster in my opinion. So anyway, that's not uh, necessarily relevant here, but I'm going to go ahead and finalize this, this whole thing. I'm going to finish that right now. Okay, so now we've got a model that is ready to be printed. Let me trim this actually. Okay, so now we're, we're back to a normal model. Again, this is something I would normally do in Blue Sky Plan, trim it up, base it. It's, it's actually quicker and easier, but since I'm what I'm going to do here as far as the change of this tooth is all in Mesh Mixer. I thought I'd just do the whole thing in Mesh Mixer. So let me go ahead and hit Control. What I'm going to do is I've just highlighted the whole thing by pressing Control A. That highlights everything in the view. And then I'm going to come down to Modify, Clear Face Group. This is an imperative, but I just like to have a nice solid color with a gray as opposed to all those different colors. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I always... Um, uh, I always like to duplicate what's going on here. So I'm going to click on Show Objects Browser or Control Shift O and make sure it's selected and press this little button right here, which is going to be Duplicate. Okay. 
So uh, to fix this uh, situation, we've got two different approaches. And it depends on how big the space is. Okay? This one's a pretty small space. So if that's the case, um, I can basically just augment the, sh the, two the one tooth in concern and then go from there. And so to do that, uh, I'll, sh I'll show you what I mean. I'm just going to draw right along the margin of this tooth. You can use the normal select, uh, but if you notice, I changed it from brush to lasso. I've been using this more and more because it's easier. I don't have to fill in the inside. It's going to, um, it's going to highlight everything within my lassoed area. There you go, and say. Um, uh, well, that's interesting. That doesn't usually happen. I'm not really sure what happened there. That's odd. Um, it didn't like my selection. So let me go ahead and just do that again. Again, this is usually a faster method, not a slower one. Probably should have started in this area, to be honest. There we go. So it selected the whole tooth, and it gives it a pretty clean line. I could um, hit B to smooth the border out, but I don't even really need to. So now what I'm going to do is, uh, for this first method, when the space is super small, I'm just going to, well, first, so I can make it easier, let me go ahead and say create a face group. This allows me to come back and fix this, and I'm going to duplicate this. You don't need to do this step. I'm doing it for the purpose of this video. It duplicated twice, it has a tendency to do that. I'm gonna hide this one. So now let's focus on this first method. Now that I've created this face group, I can hit Shift, or hit S, which is the select button. Just double click and it, cl it selects everything that's that same color. That's why they have face groups. So again, if it's a small adjustment, let's say less than half a millimeter, I mean this is, just over maybe, but I figure honestly I can do it in one tray. It's not that big of a deal. The tray will stretch and it will push that, it will pull that tooth forward. So all I'm going to do is hit the T, that transform button, which is um, deform. Oh, sorry, I'm going to hit Shift T. Okay. Now I'm going to dial this down, this fall off, which is basically let's let's dial it up so you can see what's happening. Let's dial it up to four millimeters. And what, what occurs is that's the part that's stretchy, okay? Now I don't want the n adjacent tooth to be stretchy, right? So instead, I'm gonna move it back. I just hit Control-Z, undo what I did. And now I'm gonna dial this down to, we'll say 0 0.5. Hit Tab so it falls off of that. And now it's not really going to mess with much of that tooth. And so now I can move the tooth forward right up against it. Now I'm going, I will tell you that I tend to overdo it a little bit because I want to make sure I'm very positive in that contact, okay? Because um, the plastic is going to deform and it's not going to be completely uh, adapted. So I'm overdoing it a bit. And I, honestly, that's it. I hit done and my model is done. We can show the original to show how much we have um, sort of done here. You can see how much I have moved the tooth forward. If you look closely here, that space from here to here. And so that's it. Now I can take this model, export this, and print it, and I'm good to go. No, uh, pretty simple there. Okay? So that's method one. Method two is a little more complicated. Now, the reason it's complicated is we're going to imagine that this space is much more significant. And I, and I feel like that's too much of a, st a stretch in the plastic. If that's the case, I will do the same thing that I did there. I'll move the tooth forward. but in st So now I've got these two different circumstances. I will select them both. Now let's just copy or try to duplicate them. And now with these two models, they're both selected here, I'm going to click Combine. So now I've got one file that is identical everywhere except right there, okay? I hit Control A again to highlight everything. Control Shift G, that eliminates the face groups. Really what's happened is, is we've kind of got a duplicate of this tooth line over top of itself. And in your software, your printing software, it's not gonna care. 
it's going to um, just print them in the, you know, they, they coexist. So it's just going to make a bigger tooth here. So now you have a space for the original tooth and the final tooth. Okay. So what I would do here is I would create the tray off of this model, and I would use my orthodontic pliers to create a dimple in the plastic that would push it forward. Now you can make varying depths if you want to make two or three trays to slowly push it forward, that would work. Um, you can also try making the dimple in the model itself using the sculpt tools. And I'm honestly, I'm not a big fan of this approach, but I'm going to show you how in case you want to do it. Um, the problem is, is you need to, um, uh, it, it's not great at making indents in my opinion. Okay. Um, dragging things out is easier. Uh, I'm going to see if this tool will work. I'm going to use the bracket. I'll just slide it. Bracket buttons will also make the space, uh, the size of this tool smaller. And it's just really smoothing it. So instead, you could use a boolean, but I'm going to go ahead and just do the drag because I know that'll work. Problem is, is I'm going to have to drag it multiple times. Okay, and so I'm actually creating multiple little dimples in it, but all of those dimples should be reflected in the actual plastic and um, should push on the tooth to push it mesially. If you have, you know, a good, tr um, a good thermal forming machine, it should be able to do that. Now you can see why it's kind of tedious. I, I don't, I don't really like this approach, but for those of you that are insistent upon, um, using it, doing it all digital and not, um, having to use orthodontic uh, liner players, that would be an approach. Again, not what I do, but that's, that's your option. Okie doke. Well, hopefully that helps. Um, yeah, there you go. There's a little trick for anytime you need to close a diastema space. Uh, option one for small spaces, option two and 2B, I guess. Uh, 2A would be to use players, 2B would be to do it digitally. Um, there you go. Thanks a lot.